Hey friends, today we are hanging out at Disney's Old Key West Resort. This is one of the Disney resorts that I don't get out too often and I thought it'd be fun to come out, have a little resort day, show you some of my favorite things and then also we have dining reservations at Olivia's Cafe. This is one of the most underrated restaurants on property and they have homemade soups and some amazing fried chicken. Anywho's, let's go do this. Honestly, I can't even remember the last time I was here at Old Key West. It definitely hasn't been in the new year 2022 and I'm excited because I really do love Olivia's and I love Old Key West. It's a beautiful resort. It is always so much fun to come out and explore all the different Disney resorts and this resort itself is really close to Disney Springs so if you ever want to come out you can take a boat from there or you can make a reservation at Olivia's and come and park here. I mean they really aren't that strict with the parking but I always recommend getting a reservation just in case and that's what we did today. Like I said before, I'm going to give you a grand tour of the resort and point out a couple of my favorite spots, including the Gurgling Suitcase, which is one of my like kind of favorite little lounges on property. And then a little bit later on, we're going to Olivia's. Old Key West is a Disney Vacation Club resort. And just because you're not Disney Vacation Club doesn't mean you can't stay here if you wanted to. And I like the layout because it's like kind of a little bit special and different. Most of the things are outside and they're in small individual buildings compared to a big gigantic lobby. And I kind of like it. It's always fresh. It's very bright and very colorful and uh, definitely has Old Key West vibes. For instance, this is the check-in area and it kind of reminds me of someone's like beach house living room and you, you'll see what I'm talking about when we go in here. Look at it in here. Doesn't everything just look so bright and open? It literally reminds me of someone's living room at like a beach house or a little cottage. I love it. The really interesting thing is, is this is the first Disney Vacation Club Resort. This was the first one, and it was actually called just the Disney Vacation Club Resort, and that was back in 1991, and in 1996, they renamed it to Old Key West, but this is the beginning, the start of DVC. Right here is a cozy little spot with some rocking chairs and you can just sit here, rock away and watch the DVC ferry come back and forth and just stare out at that beautiful blue sky and the trees and it's really, really amazing here. As I'm sitting here rocking in my rocking chair, I'm thinking about the soup at Olivia's. I don't know what soup they have. It's a soup of the day, and it says homemade every single day. So I'm excited. Hopefully they got good soup. Nice hot day like this. Definitely go for some hot soup. As of the making of this video, March 30th, 2022, the average uh, night cost here is $519. And you can just look that up by going into Disney's Old Key West, and it'll give you the price right there. And uh, let me know. What do you guys think? Let me know as we go through this video if you think it's worth $519 a night. Obviously, $5.19 is just an outright price outside of Disney Vacation Club. So either you have points and you want to stay here, or even if you rented points, it would be extremely cheaper. But that's just like, hey, if you just went to Disney and said, I would like to stay at Old Key West, here's my money. That would be the price. If you rented points, you could probably get it for like, you know, one or two hundred. So we walked into the check-in and then came out on this side and then the other building over here, that's where Olivia's is and then the, also the uh, general store and this is where we're going to be having dinner a little bit later on and it is a really, really amazing restaurant. I think we can have a look at the menu for a quick second before we actually dine so we'll check that out. They have breakfast, lunch, brunch, and dinner. And brunch is only on Saturdays and Sundays. And I hear the brunch is pretty amazing here, but today we're here for dinner and it's from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. And they have all the different menus on display out here so you can take a quick look, see. And here is the dinner menu. Before I was talking about the fried chicken, the southernmost buttermilk chicken is like their popular go-to item here, but they have good appetizers like crab cakes, shrimp fritas, the homemade soup of the day, which I'm definitely gonna try and they have a slow cooked prime rib. So we're definitely gonna try something different today and I'm excited. I haven't eaten here forever. 
They also have a really nice pool here and a lot of resort amenities. They have the Surrey bikes here, they have the boats, and a lot of things where you can actually just spend a whole day at the resort if you wanted to. This is also a massive resort. I mean, this is huge. It kind of reminds me of Caribbean Beach. So you have to walk far distance to like come over to the main dining area. And uh, we're just gonna show you around the resort in these areas. And also we might actually give you like a little room tour because I know that they do a lot of Disney Vacation Club open houses. So it'd be kind of fancy to see inside of a room and we'll try. Because it's such a massive resort, they do have like the Surrey bike rentals, which is kind of fun because recently we just did a little Surrey bike adventure at Disney's Boardwalk Resort. And they also have regular bike rentals here. And I kind of like that. I don't think I've ever seen the regular bike rentals at a lot of resorts. So it's cool that they have them here. James Cruiser's Taxi. Kind of fancy. I don't know anything about them though. On top of the bike rentals, they have a shuffleboard court, they have basketball, they've got tennis, they've got uh, air hockey, ping pong, a lot of cool things, and of course, the sandcastle pool. The sandcastle pool is such an awesome pool. Definitely a lot different than a lot of the other ones. And it's cool because you can build sandcastles in here. And they have tons of different like outdoor activities. Like I said, they have the tennis courts over here. And a lot of places you can just kind of relax and kind of hang out. Beachy vibes. Look at all the sand right here. Here is all the bike rental information that you need. It looks like you can rent a whole bicycle for a day. For non-members, it's $19 a day or $17 for members. Or you can do it like by the hour, it's $9.59 to $8.63. They also have the Surrey bikes there too, and they're a fun time. One of my favorite little details about Disney Vacation Club resorts is they have a community hall where they do special things and special activities like uh, tie-dyeing and also they have DVD rentals which is kind of cool because it makes me miss Blockbuster and I was walking by the community hall here and they actually have a video drop-off slot kind of like how you used to rent a movie and then you would drop it off at a drop box so I'm kind of interested to see what movies they have for rent like I, I checked the ones at Bay lake and it was shocking and i thought it would be fun to show you guys as well right here they have the gym which is right next to the community hall and this is what i was talking about before how they have like a little video return drop box right here so you just stick the movie back right in there and then if you want to rent some you can rent them in there and i think all the rooms have dvd players so i want to see what dvds they have this is the inside of the community hall, and I love it in here. It's actually really, really cool. I love this mural they have on the wall, and then, like I was talking about, here are the movie rentals, and they have them separated by binders, so, you know, they have the regular ratings, so G, PG-13, and R, and it's so funny because they have so many movies, like Arachnophobia. Do you guys remember that movie? Of course, all the Avengers, and then... <laughs> they got the newest ones too. The Jungle Cruise is in there. The Sixth Sense. Signs. So interesting. Chasing Amy. That was a, uh, a fun movie. Bad Santa. I think I pointed that out last time. And they also, I think, have video games in here you can rent out. Because they have systems. I'm sure they have every Disney movie made. And that's a cool little thing to have. Like I said before, they do do tie-dyes, and a lot of resorts do this as well. And here's a couple of the examples of what you can do. And then they have all of the sports equipment for all the stuff outside that you can just kind of come in here and take. Tennis rackets, they got volleyballs, they've got everything. They also have a pretty nifty recreational pin board here. And uh, I like how you can use this for pin trading. Like, is that fancy and everything's done by a number? And uh, a little bit of uh, photo opportunity as well, celebrating 30 years, 30 years old Key West Resort. The community hall is a really fun little spot where you can, the community hall is a really fun little spot, kind of like a living room. And it's got TVs and the DVD rentals. But now I want to show you guys the gurgling suitcase, which I talked about before. It is such a fun little bar. It's so tiny, but I love it. And I think that's why I like it so much. It's a small lounge area with a lot of pizzazz, pizzazz. <laughs> And here it is, the gurgling suitcase. And like I said, look how tiny this little bar is. But it has a lot of pizzazz all over the walls here. Lots of license plates and patches. 
some firefighters, police, canine units. It's really, really cool. And it's got one, two, three, four, five, five uh, stools at the bar. And we got two over here as well. Here is a look at some of the specialty cocktails. They have the Turtle Crawl, Slappy Joe's Bourbon Berry, Key West Freeze, Key West Loaded Bloody Mary, Ultimate Long Island, and Olivia's Strawberry Lemonade. These all look pretty fancy, but I think I might just stick to the beer. Of course, this being Old Key West, they have to have a nice little Key West beer. So cheers. A fun little thing about all these patches and license plates, I was told that these are actually brought in from people that stayed here or that have this as their home resort. And they have so many in the back that they're waiting to actually put out. And it's really cool because one thing I can say about Old Key West is it is a very close kind of connection with people that actually own here. And you'll see a lot more when we go to Olivia's. But it's funny because this is all Pennsylvania right here, a little Pennsylvania. And that is uh, where I'm from. The Keystone State, Disney VC, Pennsylvania, 1996 that license plate was from. I'm sure it's a little bit unlikely, but it's kind of worth asking. So let me know in the comments if you got to put your license plate or one of your uh, patches inside the gurgling suitcase here at Old Key West. I thought it would be fun, and I'll make sure to skim through the comments to see if that's, you know, one of you guys. And then also, when we get into Olivia's, let me know if any of those are your photos, and you guys will see what I'm talking about when we get in there. And just because there's not a lot of seats inside the gurgling suitcase doesn't mean that there's nowhere to sit down and enjoy your drinks. They have all this outdoor seating and it's kind of like I said before, everything's kind of has an open floor plan. Everything's a little bit tiny and then just lots of space outside to enjoy the good weather. We're gonna have to check in soon for a reservation at Olivia's. I got a five o'clock reservation, so as soon as it opens up, we're gonna be able to go in. And uh, now we're just kind of just waiting until it's that time. In the meantime, let's take a look at the general store here, cargo and provisions. And they always have like exclusive resort merchandise that we can check out as well. And I kind of just like going inside the little general stores at each of the resorts. They all are a little special in their own way. I love that they have the gurgling suitcase merchandise. That is so cool. Sip the day away. And they got t-shirts, they've got koozies, they've got mugs and hats. And that's what I was talking about. And then a lot of other Disney Old Key West items, including a nice little sweater here. Ooh, oh, and a lot more over here. Actually, this is a lot of merchandise. Normally I don't see this much resort merchandise, but they have tons. The general store is actually connected to Olivia's, so we're gonna be able to see what Olivia's looks like before it officially opens, if the doors are open. I don't know if the doors are open yet or not. Before I was talking about pictures and how this resort has a great connection with the people that have stayed here and the people that call it their home resort, and take a look at all these family photos on the walls here. This is all outside of Olivia's. Olivia's is actually right through here. And this is a family album, Meet Our Members. And isn't this amazing? Like, please let me know in the comments if your family is on these walls, because I think that is legendary. Look at this picture right here of a girl sitting down on a bench at Magic Kingdom with Cinderella. That is so amazing. I would probably just spend a lot of time staring at all these different, like, Disney family vacation photos. It's so amazing. Actually seeing stuff from the 90s, like that blows my mind. Look at, look at this actually. I think that license plate right there is inside the gurgling suitcase. I love it. I really do. I, re I really appreciate this. It's kind of strange seeing all these character photos like Dopey right here. Like, when did this exist where Dopey was just walking around? It looks like Epcot in the background there. And you were able to just grab a photo with him. Like, <laughs> that is so awesome. We're up here. It looks like uh, we got Tigger there. And I like the old Disney frames, Epcot Center. Look at that one right there. 2002. <laughs> All right, it is time. It is now five o'clock and the restaurant is open. And I'm sure you can't see, but inside there is a lobby full of people who were waiting for it to open. And that tells you a lot. It tells you a lot about a restaurant. 
here is the inside of the restaurant and it looks so nice in here doesn't it i like how they have this little dining room over here and it has a bunch more photos of uh members you know the family album actually the walls are covered in here wow this is so cool like i told you i kind of already am obsessed with all these family photos at disney and now we found like a jackpot look at this old mickey frame right here well that's kind of cool we're actually going to be dining in this room and it's called the dolphin room we're going to be dining with all these families and this porthole how fancy jerry dan and susan looks like today's soup of the day is a loaded baked potato soup i'm not the biggest fan of the loaded baked potato soup so i don't think we're gonna get that but we're gonna have to look at the menu like i said my go-to and a lot of people's go-to has always been the buttermilk chicken here the southernmost buttermilk chicken and i'm torn because like i said i want to try something new but that is a phenomenal dish First things first, we get ourselves a little bread service and it comes with a honey butter. The rolls look really good. Oh wow, they are very fluffy and airy. Oh, I'm excited to try these and they're hot. Hot biscuits, hot, hot dinner rolls, hot potato. <laughs> Let's take a look at the rolls here. You see that steam coming out of there? Oh yeah, try a little bit of the honey butter. Them some good rolls this is a very very good roll but I do remember last time I was here which was probably back in maybe 2020 or 2019 they had pineapple coconut rolls and I don't think they serve them anymore I asked uh, the uh, cast member that was taking care of me and she said that they had like a manufacturer like a manufacturer and supply issue and uh, they just switched over to these rolls and then added a little sweetness by uh, coming up with the honey butter but I remember those pineapple coconut rolls being phenomenal these ones are good but they're they're not pineapple coconut rolls I tell you that we definitely have to stop eating the dinner rolls though even though they're like pretty decent dinner rolls if they were the pineapple coconut ones I probably would continue eating them but since we're not getting an appetizer and I don't like the soup um, I thought maybe why not just get both of the entrees that I kind of wanted to get so I can show you guys so we're gonna get the southernmost uh, chicken and we're also gonna get the prime rib and if I don't eat it all then I'm gonna take some home and I'm probably not gonna eat it all but uh, at least I'll have lunch for tomorrow whether it be one of the other or a little bit of both if you guys didn't notice my flannel shirt is actually a spider-man flannel shirt from Roosevelt's take a look at that it's got tons of little spider-mans in it and I like it it's so bright and if you guys want to uh, buy a shirt I have a link in my description where you can go to my personal collection page and uh, use the promo code PMM20 for 20% off your first order we're gonna put a little of this gravy on here look at that oh my lord <laughs> perfect and we'll definitely want to save a little gravy for that biscuit now that the gravy business is taken care of let's take a look see here gotta cut open that chicken oh yeah this is gonna be so good <laughs> I'll make sure to let you guys know which one I think is better, especially when it comes to price points and taste, but here goes the chicken. Now we gotta try a little mashed potato here. Gotta get them all in there, scoopsy potato. There we go, a little potatoes or gravy. Potatoes are amazing. Holy moly. Oh, now I gotta try the biscuit. Got a little of the gravy on there. This dish is such a solid dish. Between the potatoes and the biscuit. Now we gotta grab some green beans. I love some green beans. I wish we had some Brussels sprouts. That would be great. But yeah, the uh, chicken lives up to the hype. I can tell you that. I think the thing that makes this chicken stand out is that amazing crispy breading on the outside it has so much flavor into it and it's definitely something different but i really do love it i'm gonna switch up to the prime rib next though because like if i wanted to heat up something or reheat something i'd rather do the chicken than the prime rib 
Now it's time for the prime rib. And I like being able to show you guys different options. You know, usually when I come out to restaurants, it's good to give you a little bit of a variety and give you more to actually look forward to so it can help you decide what you want to get in case you want to come to the restaurant. I wish I wasn't dining by myself. If I had friends, then I could. I mean, I do have friends, but if I had somebody with me, I could be like, hey, you order that, I'll order this. But uh, I still do it just so I can give you guys a better video, a little bit better. And I get to try a little bit of everything. The prime rib comes with a Cabernet Demi Glaze here. So we're going to cut in here, take a little bit from the side. There's not a lot of seasoning on the outside of this prime rib, which makes it highly suspicious. You know, I don't see any crust there. But uh, we'll try a little bit with the demi glaze and then a little bit, let it soak inside the au jus for a little bit. When I was actually coming in here, I was speaking to a friend outside who watches the videos and she was telling me she's gluten free and she likes when I'm able to show the meats and stuff like that because she can't get the chicken. So it's good that I'm able to show the prime rib and from the looks of it, it doesn't look like the prime rib I would normally eat, but uh, we're gonna give it a go. The prime rib is good. I like it with the uh, Cabernet, but uh, I feel like it's lacking a lot of flavor or sauce. So I'm gonna try to let it soak a little bit in the au jus here. That's the best way to do it. Here, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna tilt it over here a little bit. There we go. And then we're gonna drop this inside the au jus. Oop. And let it just sit in there. Let it soak up all the flavor and juices and uh, see how it tastes afterwards. I like how they give you a little a little cup here. Little little coffee cup. While that au jus is sitting, let's have some broccolini here. I do love me the broccolini too. There we go. It's hard to eat with a fork though. Because it's because of the stem, you know? There we go. Broccolini. Oh, very good broccolini. Now for the roasted potatoes. Mashed potatoes are better. Now let's check back on the prime rib here. Oh yeah, shake it off so we don't get au jus down the front of our shirt. And there we go. That's a big chunk of meat right there. Okay, so that au jus made the prime rib like, you know, eh, to pretty good. So we're going to put every single piece of prime rib in the au jus. <laughs> That's the plan from here on out. Just au jus it up to death. If I was to choose one or the other, fried chicken all the way. And, and you guys know I'm a big prime rib fanatic and steak fanatic, but that fried chicken is iconic. The prime rib is kind of just, you know, you know, you know, but uh, like I would probably never doubt myself again. And if I come back here again, which I will, I will just stick to the fried chicken, you know, stick to what you love. I'm calling it. I got a lot of prime rib left over. But I did finish my chicken. The chicken was too good. I couldn't resist. And I ate all the broccolini. I like the broccolini better than the green beans. And the mashed potatoes better than the roasted potatoes. But with this, I have enough for a little lunch tomorrow. And maybe I'll get a souffle cup of the au jus. And like have it there. So I can use the leftover prime rib. And, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to take the chicken home. But I couldn't resist. Now, I am... Full. Holy moly. I thought about getting a banana bread pudding Sunday because that looked phenomenal. It was kind of like the Ohana bread pudding, but with banana bread and then vanilla ice cream and then banana fosters on top. But I couldn't do it. Two entrees. Holy moly. And I have leftovers. I have lunch. And it's kind of funny because both of those entrees, my check ended up being $53 with my annual pass discount. And you guys know I do a lot, a lot of Disney dining. And my average check, my average check when I go out to a restaurant just for myself usually is anywhere from like 50 to a hundred dollars in that range you know what I mean I know it's, 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 it's expensive Disney food is expensive and you kind of just get you know shocked with the prices because you're used to it yeah I mean you don't get shocked anymore because you're just used to it so coming here and being able to get two entrees for like 
$153 is actually amazing. That is probably cheaper than I would say 75% of the other sit down restaurants on property. Most places, you know, they have prefixed where it could be anywhere from $60 to $90 per person. You know what I mean? So that's, that's pretty insane. And whenever I make videos, I try to have as much content as possible, whether it be appetizer, entree, or dessert, or a little bit of each, like as like a whole entire prefix meal. And when you start to add those up, appetizers can go anywhere from $10 to $15, desserts the same way. It's almost like getting two entrees for that price. So it's really cool to be able to show you that. But chicken, <laughs> all the way. I should have just stuck with it because that would have been amazing. Sorry for the long, I don't know. I just felt like going on about prices and Disney and giving you guys a little bit. And uh, yeah, the chicken is the best. <laughs> Now we're gonna start making our way out. And look at, there's a nice little uh, Moana bus there. Where's that going though? Oh, inter uh, internal resort shuttle. So remember I was talking about the resort being so big? They actually have an internal shuttle going all the way around to actually take you from different points of a monster resort. And it's cool that's a Moana bus. Oh, here comes a Daisy bus taking people to Magic Kingdom though. And with that, I think we are done here today. What a good little fun resort day, trying some food, checking out the resort. I really do love it. Let me know what your go-to is at Olivia's. Also, let me know in the comments if any of those license plates, patches, or photos are of you and your family. I think that's really amazing. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed making it. We'll see you next time. Bye.